a city broken, beaten, and engulfed by a desert, an otherworldly sight, atmosphere, and populated by demons. This is the world you find yourself in, Shin Megami Tensei 5. So the question is, should you, the viewer, play Shin Megami Tensei 5? You know the thing coming on screen? Also, you know, you should like, subscribe, comment, live, breathe, and all those other thingy mug things. Blah, 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 blah. Video beginning soon. Right now, we're going to start. Chloe eyes. So, what is Shin Megami Tensei 5? Or SMT5? Well, it's a turn based JRPG. It's the newest in the mainline entry in the long running series. The SMT franchise has had many spin offs, including the Persona franchise, which I'll get into later in the video. I covered some of the history of both franchises in my Persona 4 video, which you should go check out. But the only thing you need to know is. The SMT's origin is of a book, Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei. Also, the plan is to release the video just before SMT5 gets ported to other platforms. But as I'm currently writing this, the game has not even been announced to be coming to those other platforms yet. So hopefully it happens and it's not too far away. So this means I'll be covering the Nintendo Switch version, since it's the only version currently out. So yeah, it's actually been about one year since I made this video. I thought the SMT port would release a bit sooner than this. Well, the port is coming soon or now-ish, and it's called Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. From what I gather, most of what I say in this video is mostly going to be the same since I cover most of the beginning of the game. But I'll talk about what's changed in Vengeance at the end of the video. Another thing worth noting is each mainline numbered entry is standalone. So you don't have to play the other games to play Shin Megami Tensei 5. I know this because this is my first entry into the series. The main thing that gives the series continuity is its themes, tones, and demons. They're collectible monsters of the series. So the spin offs are something that I need to talk about. SMT has many spin offs, but the one that I need to address is Persona which in terms of sales and its place in pop culture has surpassed its original franchise, which means there can be some hostility between certain parts of both fan bases. When the game originally came out, some people even came into SMT5 expecting it to be Persona. This was even brought up in some reviews of the game. Shin Megami Tensei 5 feels like the edgier, less sociable younger brother of Persona 5. What's missing from the Persona formula here is a lot of its heart. Persona, Persona 5, Persona, Persona without the heart. I was someone hopping over from the Persona series for the first time, but I did not have these preconceived ideas about the franchise before making the jump. So what are the similarities and differences? Well, they're both GRPGs with turn-based combat. They both use the same pool of monsters. That's where the similarities end. SMT does not have the social aspects you find in Persona 3 onwards. SMT has a darker tone and themes. SMT has a greater focus on combat and is generally higher than Persona. That's just kind of a simple overview of the differences. Well, I'll explain more about what SMT is about as I talk about the game. The thing to understand is, despite having similarities, the two franchises have different philosophies and focuses. This means that some people will prefer one over the other. Atlas has even dropped the SMT name from Persona 4 Golden onwards to give the franchises a bit of separation. So if you're new to SMT and come from Persona, or just new to both franchises, it's something to consider. So now it's time to get into the actual Shin Megami Tensei 5. I will only be talking about plot from the first area of the game, which is where the majority of the footage will take place. But I will be showing parts of later game areas and some late game demons in my party, if you care about any of that. So for the video, we're going to go over the first area of the game to get an idea of its game mechanics and story. Also, the new game is technically a new game plus that I'll be going through, but it is in the newborn mode, which basically means the game will transfer my demon compendium and demon analysis data over, if that's something you need to know. So let's begin, shall we? So first things first, I pick normal difficulty. Then we get an ominous cinematic cutscene. A disembodied voice talks about order chaos. 
gods, angels and demons. We see shots of some high schoolers, who will be important shortly. The teacher says we've got some fancy new tablets, so it's time to write our name in it. I pick Lemon Danky, which was the name I chose in my first run as well. It's dangerous to go home alone, but none of these background characters want to walk home with Danky. Damn you male student A, with no face. Danky gives up and decides to go home alone. But outside we meet this guy. Yuzuru Atsunata, no idea that's said correctly, but... He says we should walk home alone with his group, and we get a choice. This choice leads into the three routes for the game, Order, Chaos and Neutral, which represents the endings you can get in the game. These routes are common across the SMT franchise. There is also a true neutral ending to the game, which I messed up in my first playthrough. The reason I'm bringing this up now is the choices you make help you on the path to one of those endings in the game, but you won't be locked in by those choices you made throughout the game. You will be very much locked into your choice in the latter stages of the game. It's just the choices you make up to that point will make your choice go smoother, let's say. After you made your choice, you'll meet some other members of the group. Now, in a similar map style, fans of franchise might recognise, we head to our destination. But there's a blockage in the way. You talk to some more background characters to find out what's happening. It seems Yuzura has run off somewhere. His sister wants you to find him, so we do just that. After we reach the location where the brother is meant to be, we see some high schoolers near the tunnel. They seem to be filming a video and say there's rumours of monsters in the tunnel. The student being filmed is Ichiro Dazai. We find Yuzuru running out of the tunnel. Then the ground starts to shake and the tunnel possibly collapses. Then we get a different disembodied voice. Talk to us. Long, long ago, before these creatures known as humans gained knowledge, the god of law seated himself upon the throne of creation. He seized all knowledge from the other gods, rebuking them, so they could never dare to approach the throne. Reducing them to mere demons. The fruit of knowledge was secreted away in a paradise of his own creation. One day, a serpent sought out the mortals, seeking to tempt them into doing his will. Eat the fruit of knowledge in this paradise, and you will become more like God. The serpent's goal was to revive the war of the myriad gods. Oblivious to the serpent's machinations, the mortals of each realm ate the fruit. One after another, without fail. The knowledge they devoured then bound to their souls, birthing humans closer to gods. When the god of law saw this, he banished all humanity from his paradise in a fit of rage. Humans, you curious creatures infused with precious knowledge. Know that you are observed by countless demons, waiting for their chance to strike. Danky Lemon awakes to find himself in the same tunnel, but now in a desert. Danky hears a distant scream. It's the blonde hair boy, who appears to be abducted by an angel. Old Danky Lemon starts to walk the desert, until he's attacked by demons. Then a man drops from the sky.
Young man, if you wish to live, take my hand. You seem to fuse together. Voices the Nabahuno make themselves known again. We start the first battle of the game, which is a tutorial battle. So this is a good place to start explaining the basics of combat. As the game explains in the tutorial, play an enemy action to come by the press turn system. Every time you do an action, it consumes one icon. We currently have one, as you can see in the top right of the screen. So we can do one action. So we select a skill. We can any skill, we use one action icon. And anything but a basic attack, we use MP. Run out of MP and you can't use most of your skills. So you begin what the game wants you to do, a basic attack. So we do just that. We also get attack back. The enemy has only one attack icon like us, so they can only attack once. Now the game wants us to know about affinities and weaknesses, which basically means each demon does better and worse at certain types of skill. But they also have weaknesses, certain types of attacks as well. If someone attacks someone else's weakness successfully, they will get another free turn. This is the crux of the press turn system, but there is a bit more to go into later on. What do you know, demons weak to electric abilities. So we get one more turn. So the next turn we kill that demon. At the end of the battle we level up. You can choose where to put one of your level up points. I choose magic. The man you fuse with tells us this is the world. The man says this place is home of the demons. He also says that he is a protofiend. He says now together they have become a being known as the Napubino. He says that we should head to a specific location to get a better understanding of the area. So we run fast to that area. The man then tells us to collect these glowing orbs to refill our various bars. We climb a hill and see some ruined buildings and what appears to be Tokyo Tower. The man says this place is once known as Tokyo. Tokyo Tower is our next location to head to. We slide down the hill towards a blue light called the Leyline Fount. These are a one-stop shop for save points, fast travels, and an actual shop as well. In the light we meet a funky dude who is the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper, as well as selling wares, wants us to look for Mii Man. So we see the Mii Man, so we collect it. This gives us five glory. I'll get into all that's useful later. Collecting me man will grant you rewards from the shopkeeper when you hit certain milestones. So after all that is sorted, we march on forward, picking up another me man in the process. We also pick up some relics from a vending machine, which we can sell later. It suggested to us it's dangerous to head on forward, so we should recruit some allies. So we approach a demon and try to negotiate. We are then given a lifestone from our minor buddy to help with said negotiations. We now get the tutorial on how to talk to demons. Hit talk on the battle menu. When negotiations, demons will ask questions. You have to give them the answer that best suits their personality. <laughs> After chat them up for a bit, they will demand payment in the form of your HP, SP and or an item. This basically just happens to want our lifestone. We enter over to the pixie, and they join our party. You can have up to three other demons in your active party at once, but you have an overall stock of demons you can hold at any one time. This number can be upgraded throughout the game. Another thing worth noting is failing negotiations can lead to a demon continuing the battle or just running away from said battle. There are also upgrades you can get to make negotiations easier. The man ahead tells us to attack demons before it attacks you, so you get an advantage in battle. We do some more battling, and some more exploring of the starter area. In the environment, there are these yellow things you can smash, to get a special treat. We also find more Mi-Man, we also meet a non-hostile demon who we can have a nice chat with. Lemon enters the cave to find his subquest. If we find their bodies or the food they're holding, we have to send them back to camp, or the food I guess. Tanky Lemon almost dies. 
This is where I remind you this game can be challenging. A wrong move can mean your death, even for someone like me who's already beat the game. If you die you go back to your last save. So save regularly. We also do more recruiting for more demons. As Lemon head towards the plot, we step in to stop a demon from being bullied. You don't want to eat me? Not a lot of flavor, you know? Trust me! This turns into another tour about the Maxarachi skills. These skills can only be used when the red bar is full up. These skills are very powerful. The skill we start with lets all our attacks in our party become critical, which is a very good ability. So when you hit a critical, it gives you one more attack, as well as do more damage. See, when we hit a critical, it doesn't take away one of our icons. So we clean house, the little demon thanks us. Oh look, the next save point. We meet a strange woman. We can now learn miracles. Miracles are permanent upgrades that use the glory Lemon has been collecting. You can upgrade things like your elemental mastery. We can have more demon stock, to name a few things. The miracle we choose restores half our HP and SP when leveling up. There are also essence fusions. The Nahubino can fuse your essence with a demon to learn their skills or even change their resistances and weaknesses. So that's a demon we're fusing our essence with. This falls under the water shares option at the save points. Next we head to that big eye thing, or as the game calls it, abscess. These pop up throughout the map and block your vision of said map. When you get close to the eye, demons spawn. Attack it and we'll have to fight some harder demons. But all Lemon Danky vanquishes those demons. I want you to clear out abscess. You have more miracles that you can unlock and can spend glory on. After that demon with the kimono offers a bead. As Danky Lemon approaches the train tracks, we get a cutscene. We find our friend Yuzuro, who does not seem phased by our current state. He does seem confused about Tokyo being in the Neverworld. Also, he can control demons. We both split up and look for clues. After that, the demon in becomes our quest navigator, who can offer us advice and find us items. We can also now fuse demons. If you've played Persona or SMT games before, you'll be familiar with this mechanic. If you haven't, you can fuse demons together to summon new demons. You can also carry the skills from fused humans to the new one. Is this demon? We find food for the side quest we started earlier. We also start another side quest. The team wants us to fight a demon for reasons. We're also told to avoid fighting this big demon for now. This demon wants some life stones, so we give it one. We do it and we finish this quest. Speaking of side quests, I won't be going over most of them anymore since most are very basic talk to this demon, give me X number of items, defeat X number of enemies. But these side quests can give you insight to the personality of some of these demons. That being said, I will go back and finish that first side quest I got. I give them their food, but they're still hungry, so we fight. Lemon makes short work of them, and with that, another side quest is finished. Take care of some more abscess, so that I can see the map better. With that, we've got a quite decent part of the map open to us. Now is a good time to talk about map exploration, which is something unique to this game, as I don't believe there's anything like this in the SMT series. It helps breaks up the gameplay. The maps are open enough so you can easily avoid most encounters if you want to. 
By open world game standards, the maps are not massive, but there are a lot of collectibles and items to find. That will help you on your journey. You also find there is a lot of verticality to exploration. These maps also have some light platforming, and you might even call it a light to collect to find as well. I won't be sure how much there is, but there are more traditional dungeons in the game, or two. You also find some platform puzzles in more of the areas, which are not great, but it takes up a small part of the game. Now is a good time to talk about the press turn system. Since it's the core combat, and there are a few more wrinkles to it. You've already gone over how to get more attacks, such as hitting witnesses or critical attacks. But there are ways to lose icons as well, such as missing an attack can take away icons, have an attack outright blocked will end your turn. Mastering the system with the key to combat. It's worth remembering the enemies try to play by the press turn system too. So back to the game. We do some more exploring, fight some more abscess. Remember that quest earlier, where that one demon wanted to stop the other one? We find that one demon, they say hey the original demon is the one that must be stopped. So now we have a choice of which demon to fight. This is a quest type that comes up a few times in the game. There is no right or wrong answer here, it comes down to your own personal philosophy. Like most choice in the game, it's worth noting whichever demon you side with will join your party. That might have more sway than things such as philosophy for yourself. We make our choice not to fight 2 and 1 against an enemy at a higher level than us. Things were going well, until they were not. In the second attempt, everyone but me are down. Luckily, she keep using dark attacks. That lemon blocks due to resistances. Eventually, we do it. We hand on the quest and get our more powerful demon. He will be very helpful in our next big battle, which will take place in Tokyo Tower, which I know from my past experience. Also, the game does give you plenty of warning ahead of time. It's also worth noting this is the first proper story boss fight in the game. It could be a hurdle of someone playing for the first time. But since I've played it before, I already know what the boss has to offer. Which is to say, I know it's attacks and weaknesses. We head towards the boss fight and see a flashback from our fusion buddy. We see what appears to be an upcoming battle. We learn Lucifer has killed God, or something. We also know we need to head to the Tokyo Dark Building next. But first we got a boss fight. So we fight the boss, here's a tip, it's weak to ice, so we use that. Oh look our shiny new demon is also an ice wielder. Even with my past experience I still the challenging battle. At the end, thank you Lemon is the only one left. But we do it. After the battle we meet a new friend. We also have a lot of new areas to explore. I'm not going to go much into the new area, since mechanically and story wise I've got nothing to add. But we do some exploring, do some side questing, do with these annoying flying enemies. Avoid a big bird and steal some eggs. Deal with some abscess. Talk to a sky dragon. He wants us to fight some demons who are nowhere near strong enough to fight yet. We reach the save point before the diet building. Do another side quest. We change our essence to fire boss. You see I'm currently weak to light. And there's a boss in the side quest that keeps killing me. You see having a weakness to light or dark can result in instant death. If Danky Lemon does die it's an instant game over. So major us give us a side quest before we can enter the Tokyo Dark building. So we do that side quest. Head to that boss that gave us trouble earlier, and let's say after a small hiccup of dying again, we defeat that mean old boss. Janky changes some essence again, to get resistances to help with the big upcoming main story boss. We ready up our party before we enter the building. We speak to this guy. Give him some cash to reveal where any me man we haven't found are yet on the map. Which is quite a few. It's worth noting that a service is available at the end of each map. We head into the building and find a bunch of dead angels. We put up a good fight, but let's end this part of the video here. If you watched this far, good for you. Play it yourself if you want to find out more. Or just look it up or something. Now that that section of the video is over, there are a few more things I want to go over. First of all, I want to talk a bit more about how it compares to the other games in the franchise as well. I talked at the start of the video about how it compares to Persona. I don't have much to say on that. Apart from it's nice how quickly you get to the core of the game, compared to Persona. It took just under half an hour to get to the core of the game. In contrast, Persona can take somewhere between 2-4 hours to do just that. 
They've also just started playing SMT3 just before I started making this video, so I can give comparisons on that also. The main takeaway I had is, SMT5 has lots, and I mean a lot of quality of life stuff, such as the game display enemy witnesses in battle once discovered. In SMT3, you also have old school random battles, you know, kind of you walk some steps and the screen flashes, then you battle. The game also has hardly safe areas, so it can be a challenge going backwards in the franchise. But I still sound over enjoying it, playing it so far. Let's talk aesthetics. Graphically, the game does look good in some places, especially the art direction helps a lot. It is running on Unreal 4, but the version I'm playing is on the Switch, so it's held back on that front. Remember, the Switch is not too far removed from a console such as the 360, which came out in 2005, but hopefully possible future ports should have the game graphically and performance-wise. Also, the soundtrack is very good, like most games in the franchise. Something else I want to touch on is DLC, specifically Day 1 DLC. Atlas has been doing this a lot recently. For the newest ports of Persona 5 Royal, also Star Hackers 2, and even this game. I didn't mention it in my Persona 4 videos since it had none, but it sucks, Atlas is clearly just taking stuff out of the game. And most of the time it's not even worth it. I'm sure future ports of this game will also have this problem as well. But it's time for conclusions. Should you play SMT5? Yes, if you want challenging turn based combat, exploration, and an otherworldly atmosphere, give it a look. If you need the social stuff from Persona games, you might want to wait till it's cheaper to try it to see if you vibe with it. I think it's a start video. I'm making this before the port has even been announced and planned to release the video just before the game comes out. So I don't know when this video is going to come out. It could be a long time from when I'm recording this. So I might have to add some extra stuff that might be important to the video just after this section. Maybe remove parts of the video entirely. You might not even see this part at all. So, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. What's new? Well, this seems kind of an expansion of the base game, like Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 Royale. But this version of the game will be available on more systems like the PS5, Xbox, and PC, which means the game will look better and hopefully run better. Now you're not locked on to playing on the Switch. In terms of new content, we've got new demons, a new character, and finally the Path of Vengeance, which is a new story path where I would assume most of the new content is located. Is it worth it for existing players? Well, I have no idea. I don't know how long the new content is, but for new players, we will assume it's going to be the defining version of the game at least. Well, that was the end of this video. Hopefully it comes out at some point close to the point that I'm recording it, but if not, oh well. You know the drill, you'll see uh, video recommendation from the old YouTube algorithm. Watch that and subscribe and things I'm currently in down so I'm gonna stop nearly soon in the video. Oh.